Not all blood tests are 100% accurate and depending on their sensitivity, some tests may miss very important health indicators, such as testing women with PCOS for insulin resistance. In saying that, getting a blood test is always a great place to start when questioning your health status and is a heck of a lot safer than the self-prescribed guessing game. So what do we have to look out for? What is it that our doctors may not be telling us? And how do we read our blood test results ourselves properly? All that and more in today's video. So if you have your test results handy, then grab them and let's get into it. But if you don't, then that's okay. I still highly recommend watching this video so that you know how to have the conversation with your doctor at your next appointment. Hello and welcome back to another video. My name is Madison Don't and here on this channel I teach you the science behind health so that you can better understand your body and become the healthiest version of you. If you're interested in getting more in tune with your body and truly understanding your symptoms better then click that subscribe button below and hit the little notification bell to actually get notified each time I post a new valuable video on health. So today's video is a super important one and something that I'm very passionate about because if blood tests are not read thoroughly, it can lead to a lot of diseases and conditions going undiagnosed. Now, what's the problem with going undiagnosed? I mean, a label doesn't change anything, does it? Well, actually it does, because if you're walking around with a particular condition, yet you don't know to support that condition with the right diet, supplementation, and type of physical activity, then it could actually lead to the condition worsening. With that said, let's jump straight into it then and learn how to effectively read our blood test results properly. Now, the blood test results I'm using have a stain on them. That's obviously from when mum and I were discussing these over tea. Now the blood test results I'm using are actually from quite a while ago, so last August, um, and that is because, yeah, last August, August, yeah. <laughs> Oh, August is the eighth month. And that is just because Medicare is actually cracking down on doctors these days and fining them thousands of dollars if they order tests that are not absolutely necessary or not the annual checkup. So I'm hoping to get another one as soon as possible. It's May, so technically one year would be August. Hopefully I can get it before then. Um, but for the meantime, I'm just gonna be using these test results um, and talk to you about those. And for those of you who aren't from Australia, Medicare is our government healthcare system and they basically pay for us to go get blood tests so that we don't have to directly pay for them ourselves, even though the money is coming from the tax we pay. The first thing you're going to want to look out for are those results color coded in red and these are the ones that you are definitely in excess or in lack of and they're the ones that you're going to want to pay the most attention to when deciding how to change your diet or whether supplementation is necessary. Now, if your results are printed in black and white like mine are, then it's gonna be a little bit hard to identify the ones in red, but all you need to do is go through and read it and find the capital H or the capital L, obviously H being high, so you're in excess of that, and L being low means you're in lack and you need to boost up those levels. For me, as you can see, I have low vitamin D levels, and it's also important to note that some of the words, like it, it does doesn't literally say vitamin D, um, it says hydroxylcalcifer. <laughs> uh, wow, words are fun. Um, Hydroxycalciferol. Hydroxycalciferol, um, so that is what vitamin D is. It's the precursor to the active form of vitamin D. Never mind about that, but just if you do see that it's out of whack, Google it and it'll tell you what it is. Um, so that's how we knew that my vitamin D was low. Um, and it also shows that my DHEAS, so DHEAS is the a stress hormone and it's a precursor to testosterone. And what led me down the path of eventually getting diagnosed with PCOS. If you're interested in either one of these topics specifically, then I have an in-depth video on vitamin D, why it's important and how to know when you should be taking supplements. And I also have a PCOS playlist that goes into how to get diagnosed, what it means, what PCOS actually is, and how my experience with getting diagnosed went down. 
the next thing you want to look out for are those results that are very close to the maximum and minimum of the normal ranges. And so for example, if a vitamin had a normal range of 2 to 50 and you measured 49, then although you're within normal, you are actually very close to being in excess and it may indicate that this is something you might want to investigate further. It may be nothing, but it may also be a very important clue into something that's not quite right for you and your body. And you're probably thinking, well, isn't that the job of the normal ranges? But think about it like this. You are so different from your dad, from your grandma, from your best friend, and so different genetically from someone of a different ethnicity to you that these normal ranges need to account for everybody without stressing everybody out and telling them that they're sick. However, what's normal for someone else may actually be abnormal for you and your body. Therefore, while the normal range may be 1 to 50, your normal range may actually be more like 10 to 30. Fortunately, my doctor is amazing and knows this too and is always reading my test results with me really closely. In fact, in my last test, I was actually told that my B12 was low normal and that this is something that I should perhaps be cautious of or look into to perhaps taking supplementation for if I feel fatigued or other symptoms relating to a B12 deficiency. I do however know that there are a lot of doctors out there that only look at the red results and don't bother to look any further and this may not necessarily speak to their ability as doctors but it may just be that they are rushed for time. At the end of the day your health is your responsibility and in a 15 minute consultation your doctor just doesn't have the time to look at your life as a whole and play the root cause detective game with you. This is why naturopath appointments are often 45 minutes to one hour because it really allows them to get a good understanding of your sleep, your diet, your physical activity and your stresses, even your emotional ones because it all plays a huge part in our health outcomes. The next thing to do is write a list of all of your suspicious results and try out the detective game yourself. So for example, vitamin D is super important in the mineralization of calcium in the bones and therefore if you find that you have a vitamin D and a calcium deficiency, it may not mean that you need both vitamin D and calcium supplements, but you may find that once you take vitamin D supplements, it also helps improve your calcium levels as well. Therefore, making links between your results and with your symptoms too can make sure that you're taking action in the right direction and not over supplementing. On this note, another thing to do while playing detective is having a look at your on the verge of normal test results and seeing if they relate to any of the symptoms that you're experiencing. Now, my advice is to write down a list of symptoms that you've been experiencing in the last month before you head to Google. Otherwise, you might read muscle pain and go, yeah, I have been a bit sore actually, when in fact you haven't actually been experiencing muscle pain as a result of a nutrient deficiency because we don't want to manifest symptoms here. But then after you've got that list, I want you for every low normal or high normal result that you're concerned about to do this. Say that you have low normal B12 results like I do. Go to Google and search symptoms of B12 deficiency and select reputable websites only. Without getting too technical on you, these are typically the medical health sites that end in .org, .edu or .gov, not .com. So then go back to your list and see if your search results explain any of the symptoms you just wrote down. If there are some symptoms that match, don't go crazy, self-diagnose and buy all the supplements in the pharmacy, but I do recommend that you book in another appointment with your health professional just to discuss it with them and get their opinion. Now, I wanna put in a very important disclaimer and be clear that, like I said, I am not encouraging self-diagnosing, but that I only made this video to help you start playing the detective game, listening to your body, and to draw your attention to clues that may be the answers to your symptoms and health concerns. Like I talked about in my iron video, it's very easy to mistake in two different conditions because a lot of our conditions do display similar symptoms, so it is just super, super important that you take this to your health professional and do have that discussion with them so that they can make an educated decision and perhaps diagnosis. And like I said, 
that they might just not have the time to look at the big picture and go through everything with you in an appointment. So it can be up to you to listen to your body and notice those patterns and any symptoms that arise and bring that to them in the next appointment just to kind of speed things up a little bit and make sure that things aren't going unnoticed. From here, your health professional can then recommend whether you should be taking supplementation or whether you could just change your diet and your lifestyle and see results from there. Remember that vitamins and minerals should always be obtained through your diet first where possible and that supplementation should definitely not replace a healthy diet but if you are deficient perhaps taking supplements may help to get you back up to your healthy normal range. I also want to acknowledge that while doctors can be incredible especially in life and death situations they stupidly are not actually taught much about the in-depth critical role of diet in their university degrees, which is so silly because they're at university for what feels like forever. But doctors only really appreciate the role of diet if they've done further professional learning on their own accord. Therefore, if you find that your doctor is just not providing the lifestyle support that you need to address the root cause of your problems rather than just block the symptoms with prescriptions, then it may be a good idea for you to see a naturopath, a nutritionist, or a dietitian. Your doctor may not even be giving you a copy of your test results, which of course you have a right to. So if that is the case, just next time you go into your appointment, they may not know that you want it. So just make sure that you ask for a printout of your blood test results and have a little read yourself because at the end of the day your health is your responsibility. Just make sure like I said to always consult back to your health professional once you've had a little read and picked up any clues that there may be. So after watching this video and reading through your results, let me know down in the comments anything interesting you found and whether you are in excess or in lack of any vital nutrients. And we might actually start seeing some patterns between people down in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to like it below and subscribe. And also come and join us over on Instagram where I share health tips throughout the week between these videos. But that's all from me for today. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video next week week.